Cervical cancer is one of those conditions many people believe should already be under control, especially in a country with advanced medical care like the United States. After all, we have pap smears, we have HPV testing, and we even have vaccines that can stop most cases from happening in the first place. So why does cervical cancer still claim lives? Why do thousands of women still get diagnosed every year, and why do too many still die from a disease that's mostly preventable? This is the question we need to face head-on, because it's not just about statistics, it's about real lives, mothers, daughters, sisters, and friends who could still be here if certain barriers weren't standing in the way. To understand why this happens, we need to look deeper than just the existence of pat smears. We need to talk about access, follow-up, education, disparities, and the realities of the healthcare system that often leave some people behind. In this session, we're going to start by breaking down what pap smears are designed to do, why they've saved countless lives, but also why they're not the whole story. Then, we'll explore the major reasons women in America are still vulnerable to cervical cancer, even with preventative tools available. And most importantly, we'll uncover what can be done to change this reality. Because the truth is simple but urgent, cervical cancer doesn't have to keep claiming lives. And the more we understand the why, the closer we get to preventing these losses. Pap smears have been around for decades, and they've saved millions of lives worldwide. The test itself is simple. A sample of cells is collected from the cervix and then examined under a microscope to look for changes that might lead to cancer. If abnormal cells are spotted early, treatment can happen before they ever turn into something life-threatening. That's why pap smears are considered one of the most successful cancer screening tools in history. But even though pap smears work, they don't work for everyone in practice. One of the biggest issues is that not everyone gets screened. Some women don't have regular access to healthcare because of cost, lack of insurance, or living far away from clinics. For others, it's about time, juggling jobs, family responsibilities, or simply not being able to take a day off to go for a test. And then there are women who may not know the importance of screening in the first place, or who may feel embarrassed or fearful about the procedure. Another issue is that pap smears aren't perfect. No test is 100% accurate. Sometimes the results can come back normal even when abnormal cells are present, especially if the sample wasn't collected properly or if the changes in the cervix are very small. That's where HPV testing adds another layer of protection. Since nearly all cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, testing for high-risk strains of HPV can pick up threats before any visible cell changes occur. Together, pap smears and HPV testing create a stronger safety net, but not every healthcare setting offers both, and not every patient knows to ask for it. So even at this early stage in the story, we can see that having the test available is not enough. Access, consistency, and awareness all play major roles in whether that test actually protects someone from cancer. Even when women do get screened and the pap smear shows an abnormal result, that doesn't always mean the danger is over. In fact, one of the most critical points in preventing cervical cancer is what happens after that abnormal result. Follow-up care is essential, but many women fall through the cracks at this stage. Sometimes the issue is fear. An abnormal pap smear can sound terrifying, and some women delay further tests or treatment because they're afraid of what it might mean. Other times, it's a matter of logistics. Follow-up appointments often require time off work, arranging childcare, or finding transportation, things that aren't always easy to manage. There are also gaps in communication. Not every patient fully understands what an abnormal result means, and not every healthcare provider explains it clearly. Some women may not even realize that an abnormal pap smear doesn't mean cancer. It often means precancerous changes that can be treated before they ever become dangerous. But if that next step doesn't happen, those cells can continue to progress and the window for prevention closes. In some cases, clinics and health systems fail to track patients who miss follow-ups, meaning abnormal results get lost in the shuffle. And for women in under-resourced communities, the chance of missing critical follow-up care is even higher. 
This gap between screening and treatment is one of the biggest reasons cervical cancer still develops, even when the first warning signs were detected. This stage shows us something important. It's not just about whether women are getting screened, but whether the system supports them all the way through the process. Without consistent follow-up, the benefits of pap smears can easily be undone. When we look at who is most affected by cervical cancer in the United States, a clear pattern appears. Black women and Hispanic women are more likely to die from cervical cancer than white women. This is not because of biological differences, but because of systemic inequities in healthcare access and treatment. Women in these communities are more likely to face barriers such as lack of health insurance, fewer local healthcare facilities, and long wait times to see specialists. Language barriers, cultural stigma, and distrust of the medical system can also play a role in delaying care. Even when diagnosed, studies have shown that women of color are less likely to receive timely and aggressive treatment compared to white women with the same condition. Poverty adds another layer to the problem. If someone is struggling to pay rent or put food on the table, scheduling and paying for regular pap smears may not feel like a priority, even though it could save their life. Living in rural areas creates similar challenges, where the nearest clinic offering gynecological care could be hours away. These disparities don't just show up in statistics, they show up in outcomes. Women from underprivileged backgrounds are often diagnosed later, when the cancer is more advanced and harder to treat. They're also more likely to experience interruptions in treatment, whether from financial strain, lack of transportation, or difficulty navigating complex medical systems. So when we ask why cervical cancer still claims lives in America, even with pap smears and vaccines available, Part of the answer is this. Not all women have the same chance of benefiting from these tools. Until these inequities are addressed, the promise of prevention will remain unevenly distributed. The HPV vaccine has the power to change the future of cervical cancer. Because almost all cervical cancers are caused by high-risk strains of the human papilloma virus, protecting against those strains can stop the disease before it ever begins. Studies have shown that the HPV vaccine can prevent up to 90% of cervical cancers, making it one of the most effective cancer prevention tools ever developed. But in the United States, vaccination rates are still not as high as they should be. Some parents hesitate to vaccinate their children because of myths and misinformation, often tied to the mistaken belief that the vaccine encourages early sexual activity. Others simply don't know enough about it, or they may not have easy access to a doctor who strongly recommends it. In certain communities, cultural stigma or lack of awareness keeps families from considering the vaccine at all. The vaccine works best when given before exposure to the virus, which is why it's recommended for boys and girls starting around ages 11 to 12. Yet many parents delay or skip it, leaving their children unprotected during the years when it can be most effective. For adults who missed the vaccine when they were younger, catch-up doses are available up to a certain age, but not everyone is aware of this option. This gap in vaccination means that while younger generations could eventually see much lower rates of cervical cancer, the benefits are not being spread evenly. Some groups are far more protected than others, and that imbalance contributes to the continuation of cervical cancer deaths today. The vaccine is not a substitute for pap smears, but it's a powerful tool that when combined with screening could make cervical cancer a rare disease. Yet until vaccination rates improve across all communities, cervical cancer will continue to affect families who could have been protected. Age is another factor that often gets overlooked in the conversation about cervical cancer. Most women think of it as something that only affects younger people, especially those in their 30s and 40s. But the truth is, older women can still develop cervical cancer, and in some cases, they face higher risks because screening slows down or stops too soon. Guidelines usually suggest that women can stop pap smears after the age of 65 if they've had a history of normal results. But that recommendation assumes a woman has had regular screenings throughout her life. 
For women who have gone many years without consistent screening, stopping too soon could mean missing cancers that develop later. This is particularly concerning for women who grew up in times or places where pap smears weren't widely available, or for those who never had steady access to health care. Another issue is that as women get older, routine gynecological visits tend to become less frequent. After menopause, some women no longer see their doctor regularly for reproductive health, which increases the chance of cancers being missed. And because early cervical cancer often causes no symptoms, it can silently progress until it's at a more advanced stage. This means that some women, particularly those over 50, may not realize they're still at risk. The lack of continued education around cervical health in older age groups leaves gaps in awareness, and those gaps can lead to late diagnoses when treatment is much more difficult. So while pap smears and HPV testing work well, they only work if they're continued long enough, applied consistently, and adapted to each woman's personal health history. Otherwise, cervical cancer can still find opportunities to slip through. Even when cervical cancer is detected, survival often depends on how quickly and effectively treatment begins. Unfortunately, treatment delays are another reason the disease still claims lives in America. For some women, the first barrier is cost. Even with insurance, cancer treatment can come with high deductibles, copays, and unexpected expenses. For uninsured patients, the price tag can feel impossible, leading some to postpone or forego treatment altogether. Every delay matters, because cervical cancer can progress rapidly if it isn't addressed in time. Geography also plays a role. Women living in rural or underserved areas may not have access to oncologists or cancer treatment centers nearby. Traveling long distances for care requires time, transportation, and money that many families simply don't have. By the time these women are able to start treatment, the cancer may be more advanced. Another issue is the healthcare system itself. Delays in scheduling procedures, waiting for insurance approvals, or navigating confusing referral networks can add weeks or even months before treatment begins. For an aggressive cancer, that time can make the difference between a curable case and one that becomes much harder to control. On top of that, not all women receive the same quality of treatment. Studies show disparities in the types of care offered, with women from marginalized communities more likely to receive less aggressive therapy or experience interruptions in their treatment. Sometimes this happens because of limited hospital resources, but often it reflects deeper inequities in the system. The tragedy is that cervical cancer is highly treatable when caught early, but when treatment is delayed, uneven, or inaccessible, the window of opportunity can close. That's why ensuring not just diagnosis, but timely, effective care is critical in reducing deaths. Education and awareness sound simple, but they are some of the most powerful tools in the fight against cervical cancer. And sadly, they are not reaching everyone. Many women skip pap smears simply because they feel healthy and don't realize the disease often develops silently with no symptoms in the early stages. By the time warning signs like unusual bleeding, pelvic pain, or discharge appear, the cancer may already be advanced. For others, embarrassment or stigma around reproductive health creates a barrier. Talking about cervical health isn't always easy, especially in communities where these topics are considered private or taboo. Without open conversations, women may not know how important regular screening is, or they may avoid tests altogether out of discomfort. There's also a lack of understanding about the HPV vaccine. Some people still believe myths that it encourages sexual activity, when in reality, it's about protecting health long before cancer can take root. Others don't realize the vaccine is available for boys as well as girls, even though vaccinating both reduces the spread of HPV and further protects future generations. Awareness campaigns exist, but they don't always reach the women who need them most. Language barriers, low health literacy, and cultural differences can all affect how information is received. If someone doesn't fully understand what cervical cancer is, how it develops, or why screenings are critical, they're far less likely to prioritize preventive care. 
Education empowers women to take action, to schedule screenings, to follow up on abnormal results, to ask about HPV testing, and to vaccinate their children. Without it, even the best medical tools can go unused, leaving women vulnerable to a preventable disease. When you put all of these factors together, the picture becomes clear. Cervical cancer still claims lives in America, not because we lack the tools to prevent it, but because those tools aren't reaching everyone equally or being used to their fullest potential. We have pap smears, but not every woman gets screened regularly. We have HPV testing, but it's not always offered or accessible. We have vaccines, but too many families hesitate or miss the opportunity. We have treatment, but delays, costs, and systemic barriers make it harder for some women to survive. And throughout all of this, education gaps and health disparities widen the divide between those who benefit from prevention and those who don't. The tragedy is that cervical cancer is one of the most preventable cancers we know. Caught early, it is highly treatable. In many cases, it should never progress beyond a precancerous stage. Yet because of missed screenings, delayed follow-ups, inequities in care, and misinformation, too many women still fall through the cracks. This isn't just a medical issue. It's a social one. It reflects the challenges of health care access, the weight of poverty, the persistence of stigma, and the consequences of unequal systems. Until these are addressed, cervical cancer will continue to take lives it doesn't have to. So when we ask why cervical cancer still exists in a country with pap smears and advanced medicine, the answer is simple but sobering. Having tools is not the same as making sure everyone can use them. The truth is, cervical cancer doesn't have to keep claiming lives in America. We already have the knowledge, the tests, and the vaccines that can make this disease almost entirely preventable. What's missing is making sure those tools are accessible, understood, and used by everyone, not just some. If you're someone who has access to regular health care, don't put off your pap smear or HPV test. These screenings can find problems long before they become dangerous. If you have children, talk to your doctor about the HPV vaccine. It's one of the strongest protections you can give them for their future. And if you know someone who isn't aware of these resources, share this knowledge. Sometimes a single conversation can make the difference between prevention and a late diagnosis. On a larger scale, we need to push for stronger healthcare access, better education campaigns, and systems that make it easier for women to follow up after abnormal results. Because prevention isn't just about having the science, it's about making sure no one is left behind by the system. Every woman deserves the chance to be protected from a disease that modern medicine can almost completely stop. Cervical cancer doesn't need to be a leading cause of death. With awareness, action, and equity, we can move toward a future where cervical cancer is not just reduced, but eliminated. So take this message seriously, for yourself, for your family, and for your community. Awareness is powerful, but action saves lives. Together, we can make sure cervical cancer no longer claims lives in a country where prevention is possible.